Hello, welcome to the Friday, June 4th, 2021 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Well, if you're running Zoom, which probably means everybody listening to this podcast, you probably are familiar with various ways to secure Zoom and to configure it to be less open, in particular to Zoom bombing. The Center for Internet Security has recently released a benchmark with about a hundred or so different issues that you may want to check your Zoom configuration for. And while I'm still not able to receive the emails that I need to click on in order to actually obtain a copy of the benchmarks from the Center for Internet Security, there is now a nice script available that automates verification of this benchmark. So all you have to do is run the script, give it your account credentials so it can check your configuration and it'll spit out a nicely formatted report detailing what you may want to adjust in your Zoom configuration. So if you got some time today, this may be a nice exercise uh, to run to see if you are in compliance with the benchmark. As usual with these benchmarks, you may not necessarily find all of the items that they're looking for applicable for your environment. And F5 released an update for the big IP edge client for Windows. It fixes a memory corruption vulnerability, CVE 2020-5897, that could be triggered to execute arbitrary code. In order to execute the code, the victim would have to visit a malicious website using the Internet Explorer browser. The vulnerable component is actually the active X component for a big IP edge client. So other browsers are not affected. And yes, and then we got another smart lock vulnerability. Now there are different types of smart locks. Some of them, for example, allow a local access uh, via, for example, Bluetooth low energy, sometimes RFID, or in some cases, there is also an HTTP API involved in order to remotely lock or unlock these uh, smart locks. WeLock is one application for Android that was recently released to Together with an accompanying uh, smart home access solution and uh, it suffers from some pretty interesting and sadly uh, common vulnerabilities. One important API call for example is not authenticated so all you need in order to access that API call is a phone number of your victim and what's coming back is well a bunch of parameters including a pattern Password. That password is encrypted using a static key that's embedded in the app and of course retrievable and this password can then be used to unlock the lock via Bluetooth low energy. So it doesn't appear to be possible to unlock the lock remotely via the HTTP API, at least that's not documented as part of this disclosure, but you still require a little bit of proximity in order uh, to use uh, that particular uh, password. And yes, I keep saying I'm not going to talk about WordPress vulnerabilities anymore, but ever so often there is one, or in this case, a couple of vulnerabilities uh, that are worth mentioning. First one is a vulnerability in Fancy Product Designer. This is a plugin often used by e-commerce sites that for whatever reason decide to run on top of WordPress. And apparently 17,000 websites are running this plugin and it is vulnerable and there is no patch available and the vulnerability is already being exploited. The vulnerability itself is again very common. This plugin allows the uploading of images uh, to the website but isn't careful enough in actually validating these images so it is possible for an attacker to upload executable PHP files that can then be used to take over the site. 
Attacks may have started as early as late January and appear, according to the company Wordfence, to originate mostly from three distinct IP addresses. The second vulnerable plugin is Jetpack, which remarkably is a security plugin that's supposed to add additional protections to your WordPress site, but also offers a couple of, I guess, more eye candy features like a carousel feature that is apparently a vulnerable here. 5 million active installations in part because it is actually maintained and developed by Automatic, the company behind WordPress. The good part, I guess, here is that because it is maintained by WordPress and it is uh, very popular with five plus million installs, WordPress went ahead and did push an update that should automatically apply. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again on Monday. Bye.